lately tell the same old story of doom and gloom and violence and death. Just a, one week ago in Las Vegas, a, a man killed 58 people, almost 500 wounded. The greatest massacre, shooting massacre in our country. Puerto Rico and other islands are without power, water, food, medicine after Hurricane Maria. In cemeteries, coffins pop up and they don't know to which grave they belong. Some islands, school has been canceled for the year. It's not a good thing. And this is October, Respect Life Month, and we remember, sadly, that abortion kills one million unborn children every year, tens of millions over the years, that in our state of Florida, children have less rights, unborn children, than uh, baby sea turtles. So there are troubles in the world, and they tell the same old story, violence and death and doom and gloom. Well, Jesus told the story, and it began like the same old story. A landowner plant, planted a vineyard, put up a hedge, dug a wine press, leased it to tenants. When the time came for the landowner to collect his share of the harvest, the tenants refused. Instead, they beat and killed his messengers. So Jesus ended the story with a question, what will the owner of the vineyard do to those wicked tenants? Well, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, the leaders responded. Happily for us, that's not what God does. That's not what God does. The story of violence and death and doom and gloom does not end the way we expect it. You see, Christ has changed the end of the story. Instead, this is the story, a new story, that we, the church, tell. And our story begins with a gift. Everything we have is a gift from God. We are stewards of the gifts of time and money and health and wealth and family and friends and blessings and freedoms. Our life itself is a gift. Creation from the beginning is a gift from our gracious God. Everything we have is a gift. I like to end my day by counting my blessings uh, one for each finger, that's 10, I think. And, uh, you know, thank you, God, for uh, my dog, Maxi. Thank you, God, for uh, uh, dinner on the table. Thank you, God, for this visit today. Thank you, Lord, for a car to get me around. Thank you, Lord, for air conditioning. You know, just simple things to thank the Lord. For. And I feel better. You know, I feel more grateful. And I wake up in the morning, and just, it's great to be alive. It's, it's great to be alive. I'm counting my blessings, and everything's a gift from God. So with gratitude to God, our joy is to give these things as we've been given to, to give freely as God has given to us. Uh, a couple weeks ago was my birthday, and people gave me a big chocolate cake, and uh, I shared it. Okay, with the parish staff, <laughs> gave it. Uh, that wasn't too hard to do because it. Um, I enjoyed it, a little slice, but I didn't want to spend the rest of the week in the gym, so I sent it to the, <laughs> we shared it. <laughs> um, but more ser seriously, <clears throat> our joys in giving to others, uh, a, a month ago I told you a little story with Sebastian Junger, uh, a moment he had where a man came up to him while he was hitchhiking and gave him a bologna sandwich and just said, I wanted to see, make sure that you were okay, and this man didn't have two pennies to rub together. Uh, but was took responsibility for Sebastian Junger, not just giving him a gift, but giving him responsibility, that, taking that responsibility for him. And uh, that's that's part of our story. Our joy is in giving as God gives. Now, of course, there's trouble in the story we tell that we can act like those wicked tenants in the story that Jesus told. I may have sh shared with you um, my niece, when she was a little girl, now she's graduated from college, when she was a little girl, 
I recall seeing her across in a room, frustrated. She's carrying all her stuffed animals and her crayons and books in her little hands. And she, was a, for whatever reason, didn't want to leave them behind. And when her mom bent down to pick her up, she's, this girl just burst into tears because things are dropping out of her fingers. And how can she hand, hug her mom when she has to decide what to do? hang on to these things or hug her mom. Um, there's something in us that hangs on to things and doesn't want to give a hug. <laughs> it might not be murder, like in the story Jesus told, but all the same, there's something in us uh, that, that grabs and takes and doesn't give. Yet even when we act like the wicked tenants, <clears throat> when we do not accept that everything is a gift from God, the Lord God gives us Another gift. He gives us his mercy. God the Father gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Through his cross and resurrection, he takes away our sins, including the greed to accumulate more than we need and the fear that we will not have enough. And there in place, he gives us himself. This is the heart of our story we tell. Even when we act like wicked tenants, even when we think what we have is ours and we deserve it or entitled to it, the Lord God gives us another gift. He gives us his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, true, one day we will come face to face with the Lord for an accounting of how we have stewarded his gifts. He will say to the sheep of this flock, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the goats who ignored others in their need, he will go to their doom. So there is an accounting. But until then, we have good news. The church has a great story to tell. It's not the same old story of doom and gloom and violence and death. We tell the story of Jesus Christ. So for the next several Sundays, this time of year, we look at our parish and how we've been helping others hear the story, hear the good news of Jesus Christ. In August, we had a parish mission. And it was the first time we had attempted something in the beginning of the school year before people were busy with sports and schedules um, to you know, start the year with a spiritual mission. And you can see its fruits. Uh, not only did it give hundreds and hundreds of people a chance not only to know about God, but to come to know him as a loving father who wonderfully created us in love and wonderfully redeemed us in Christ, is more than a one-shot wonder. Getting out of rows and into circles, over 130 people have signed up for small discipleship groups, English and Spanish. So this mission helps tell the story. This very place, this, our parish campus, tells a story. It's our spiritual home. It's a field hospital for the broken and hurting, for those who have given up, for those who are sick and tired of living the same old story of doom and gloom. This is a, a special place. Our next step in our master plan is to replace those rented modular buildings that we pay $80,000 a year to with a permanent space for meeting, classrooms, and parish office. That's our next step and our next chapter in our story. Uh, so we continue to pay down our debt. The second collection every uh, on the second Sunday of the month, 100% goes towards our debt, paying our, down our debt, so we can take the next step in our master plan. And this weekend also we have available our parish financial report. So please take a look at it uh, in the bulletin. It gives an accounting of how the, the Sunday collection has been used and how much debt we owe on this parish life center. And I encourage you to look at your own spending, your own giving, your own saving, and entrust it to the Lord. Trust him how your finances can serve the Lord and tell his story. Our parish is not about programs. It's not about what we do. Our parish is not about principles. It's not about how we live. Our parish is about a person, one person, Jesus Christ, whom we 
tell his story. We tell his good news to the world.